GraphQL has been on the rise in the past few years and is much loved by developers because of its flexibility. While we do not have native support for GraphQL on AppSmith today, but it is possible for you to talk to your GraphQL backends by using the REST API connector that is already existing in AppSmith. And that's because GraphQL was actually built on top of REST. My name is Confidence, and this video focuses on using GraphQL APIs in your AppSmith applications. Are you excited? I'm sure you are. So let's get started. All right, so this is the simple application we are going to be building out to display tickets and also comments. And you will be able to select a status for a particular ticket group and be able to see tickets that match that status. For the back end, we have Hasura set up for this, and this is the Hasura dashboard. Let's go over to the data tab so that I can show you what we have right now in the database. So in the database, we have a public schema that has the tickets and let's take a look at the tickets table. You can see we have lots of columns and lots of data in the tickets table. We also have comments that are mapped to a specific ticket. So we have the ticket ID and then you have details for that particular comment. So this is what we are going to be using to build out the application. But the first thing we need to do here is to connect to the Hasura backend API for GraphQL. And in order to do this, I'm just going to copy over the GraphQL URL endpoint here. And let's go to connect this to our AppSmith application. So head over to the data source section, create new. I'm going to be creating a new authenticated API. And let's call this Hasura. All right, this looks good. Pasting the URL I have copied. And we need to pass in some headers. So the required header is the XHasura admin secret. I'm just going to copy this. And we also need to set the value. For the value, I'm just going to grab this right here. And paste in the value here. And this looks good, so I can go ahead to save this. And here we have the data source configured. Now let's create a new API to get tickets from the backend. So let's call this get tickets. All right, and this is going to be a post request. So I'm going to set the request type to post. Then we need to go in to configure the body. And this body is going to contain the query that actually executes in order to get the ticket. That's the GraphQL query. In order to get the GraphQL query, we need some help from the graphical playground we have right here built into Hasura. So we can do that natively in AppSmith, but it's possible to run that query after getting it from the graphical playground. So for each ticket, we want to be able to grab a couple of parameters. So we want to be able to grab the ticket ID. We also want to be able to grab the status. We want to be able to grab the assigned to. And lastly, we want to be able to grab the ticket priority. So we can go on to run this and we should get some data back. But right now we're actually fetching all tickets in database and this is a really long list of data. We want to make sure as was said in the application that we are able to get tickets based on status. So we have the open status, the in progress status and close status. So let's add that filter for status. So here we're going to add a where clause and we want to make sure that the status is equal to um, the status like open, for example, and running this should return only tickets that have the status of open, as you can see from the list here. But right now we have the status hard coded into the query. It's going to make sense to move this into a variable. So let's do that right now. So to move this into a variable, what we need to do is um, use the variable, which is the dollar sign right here. So I'm just going to click on this. And here we have a variable auto generated for us. This variable is not descriptive. So I'm just going to update this to say status. And let's also call this status. All right, that looks good. And we can go to remove the default value right here and actually pass it as some query variables to the query when it is executed. So for the variable, we have the status. And for the status, we can hard code this to something like open. All right, this looks good. Now we can execute this by clicking on the play button and we should get exactly the same data coming back. So we have this query configured and we can go to make use of it in the AppSmith application. So I'm just going to copy this over 
and let's head back to the API we're trying to build out for get tickets. For the body, we would need to pass in some JSON. The first value we'll be passing in is query. And this will be the query we copied over. So I'm just going to paste this right here. And we can go on to format this a bit. All right, that looks good. The second thing we need to pass over is the variables. So this is going to be variables. And this is going to be exactly what we have right here. So I'm just going to copy this over. And let's paste this right here. And now we can run this to check it out to see if everything works. And you can see that we have uh, the same data coming back into our application. The only change we need to make right here is that we want the status to be dynamic because we already have a drop down setup, which is the status select. So let's go into make use of the statuses from this drop down. So let's go into get tickets body. And for the status, I'm just going to pull this from status select dot selected option value. All right, that looks good. And you can see in the evaluated value pane, we have the value selected from the status select showing up right here to show that everything works fine. So I'm just going to run this and we have exactly the same data coming back. So let's go in to display the tickets we are getting back in the application. Here we have a ticket table. So I'm just going to display this data right here. So this will be coming from get tickets dot data dot data dot tickets and you can see that we have tickets having a status of open displayed on the table but we need to make one more change to the status select and we need to configure the on change parameter so whenever an option changes we want to go ahead to re-execute the get tickets query so that we are able to fetch tickets for the status selected from the drop down so we can go into select tickets that have a status of closed and you can see that all statuses for the tickets being displayed right now are closed. So we have the first part of the application done right now. The next thing we need to do is to pull comments for a ticket selected from the table. So selecting a new ticket, we need to go pull comments for that particular ticket and display that in the comments list right here. So in order to do that, we need to build out the comments query. So for the comments query, I'm just going to delete everything right here and let's build this from scratch. So for the comments query, we need to display the comment ID, the comment text, and also the comment author. And running this would definitely return all comments from the database. But we just want this to be for a particular comment. So I'm just going to grab a comment ID. We need to add a where clause and make sure that the ticket ID is the same as the ID we need right here. So for the variable here, we are also using variable similarly. This is going to be ticket, all right? And we do not need to pass any default values. So this is going to be ticket, all right? And for the variables, all right, this should be string, all right? For the variable here, this is going to be ticket. And for its value, I'm just going to paste in what I copied over and we can run this. And you see that we would only get comments for the particular ticket ID we have passed over here. So let's copy this over and also use this to build out a get comments query in our Smith application. So let's go to the Hasura data source here, create a new API. I'm going to call this get comments. All right. And this is going to be post request. Unfortunately, even though the name of the query is get comments, this is going to be post request. All right. So let's go to body and we would need to put in some query. And this is similarly going to be what we copied over from Hasura. Format this a bit. Then we need to add one more key for variables. All right. And let's go copy the variables over. So this is going to be ticket ID. And I'm going to paste this here. And we can test this by clicking on the run button to see if this works. And similarly, we have the comments displayed. But what we want is that we want the ticket ID displayed here or sent up here in this query to be based on the ticket selected from the table. So we can easily do that by pulling that data from um, ticket table dot selected row dot ID. 
and taking a look at the evaluated value, you can see that we're actually passing the ID of the row selected from the table right now. And we can run this and have some data coming back as you can see. So let's go hook this up to the um, comments list. So for the data here, this will be coming from getComments.data.data.comments. All right, and that looks good. So let's go into display the author. So this is going to be current item, the author. All right, that looks good. And we also want to display the text value. So this is going to be current item dot text. All right. And you can see that we have that displayed here as well. We need to make a slight change to the tickets table. And the change we're making right here is going to make sure that whenever a new row is selected, we need to go re-execute the get comments query. All right. That looks good. Now we can go select on a new ticket and you can see that um, we have a loading state on the list and then we have new data displayed and selecting on something else would also reload the list in order to execute the get comments query for that selected ticket and we have that being displayed right here. And we've been able to do all of this using GraphQL in AppSmith. You can take a look at this. You see we have GraphQL queries right here and we're doing all of this using GraphQL in AppSmith. So this is how easy it is for you to use GraphQL in AppSmith. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, please do ask them in the comment section and I'll be sure to take your questions. And if you did find this video helpful, leave a like and get subscribed and I'll see you in the next video. All right, that'll be all for today. Take care. Bye-bye.